Buddy, can I talk to you on camera for a second? Let me, yeah, I'm done with Will. I, I got one question for you. You just shake your head yes or no. Did you have to pay for that popcorn? Yes, I did. So it wasn't free? No. Bernie didn't give you free popcorn? No. All right. All right, how much free stuff are you expecting from Bernie? Um, in reality, nothing is free. And I think I would hope that people that listen to his message understand what he means by free college, that it's not free, um, that he's trying to help college students, you know, uh, not rack up so much debt and have the opportunity um, to attend college. Right. Um, um, have you always voted Democratic? Yes. Are you one of the 30, today came out in the Huffington Post, that 33% of Bernie supporters will not vote for Hillary Clinton. Are you one of those? No, I voted for Hillary um, back in 2004, mm -hmm. 2008. 2008, yeah. 2008. Let me try that again. Go ahead. I voted for Hillary back in 2008, mm -hmm. and uh, I'll support whoever is the Democratic nominee. Okay. Um, what do you think of all the protesters going to Trump rallies. But then here we came here just looking to see if there would be any pro people protesting Bernie, and I didn't see any. Um, why do you think that is? Um, I think initially, um, I think the first time it happened at a Trump rally, they, you know, not knowing any better, let people in to, to protesters in. And then uh, when Mr. Trump saw the effect it had and the fact that he could stand up and say, get him out of there. He actually, the next couple times, used it as a, uh, as a campaign technique. Remember the one speech he gave, I think, in Kansas City? First 30 minutes or so, 30, 45 minutes, was about, you know, get him out of here is basically all he said. So at, at some point, at one point, it seemed like that was his strategy because he really doesn't have anything else to talk about. Let's talk about the protesters. Well, recently, he's, you know, now the Secret Service is keeping them out of there because, you know, that's their job. So now, yeah, we saw him kicking people out, just had face paint on. They're like, no, nope, right. you're not going in. Right. So now what is he talking about? He's talking about himself being rich and, you know, what's his message? I don't I don't know. I still don't know. Have you looked at his health care plan? Um, I have not. I wasn't aware that he had a health care plan. He put out, I think it's a seven-point plan. A lot of it is um, letting people buy insurance across state lines, which you currently can't do, um, making all fees and stuff transparent so people can shop around to different hospitals and whatever, and also letting people buy prescription drugs out of the country because right now a lot of people go to Mexico or Canada to get pr prescription drugs. And um, that's, that's all I can remember off the top of my head, but that, those were part of the plans. And I, to me, that sounds a lot better than what we have now, which is trying – kind of forcing people into state-run systems and allowing the rates to go up? Um, you know, without looking at the plan, it's hard to say. I um, Everything sounds good until you try to enact it. Yeah. I think the biggest problem Trump would have as president would be trying to get people in Congress to cooperate because I don't think a lot of people like him in either party. Mm -hmm. um, so how how is he going to get anything done is the big question. What do you think in this election? We have two populist candidates, one on the left and one on the right. And, you know, I think it would be epic to see that ultimate debate between two populist candidates. Because right now, they really, you know, Bernie definitely has the numbers compared to Hillary. We were at a Hillary event this morning. There was 400 people there. You know, here's three times that. Uh, Trump pretty much does the same against the other guys. Uh, what, do you, what do you think about that, if, if we had that, real, that big debate between, you know, capitalism and democratic socialism? Um, it would be exciting television. It would be exciting campaign season. Um, be, be great entertainment. Um, it, it'll happen in the Republican Party. I don't see it happening in the Democratic Party because of the superdelegates and the, the opportunity for the party to weigh in. Um, not just saying Bernie can't get the superdelegates, he certainly could. Um, but the, the Clinton machine is uh, experienced. And she's, you know, when it comes down to it, she's got the ace in her pocket, Spoken Appleton, this morning. I mean, Bill Clinton is quite a speaker, quite a campaigner. So, you know, I think in the end, Hillary's going to come out of the out of the convention as the nominee. And, um, you know, whether, whether it's Trump on the Republican side or a brokered convention 
and it ends up being um, Cruz or someone else, you know, I think it's going to be scorched earth for Trump. He's If he's not the nominee, I think he's going to pretty much destroy the Republican Party. Do you think that would be a good thing? I think it would be what it is. You know, I, I think there's enough strife in the party that something needs to to change. Um, and uh, he's such a wild card that something's going to change regardless of what happens. All right, cool. Uh, I guess one more question would be if if uh, Bernie doesn't get the nomination, but say he does have more popular votes than Hillary, um, do you think that could also lead to a split to the Democratic Party? I, I don't think so. I, I think Bernie's been around the block enough to know. Uh, I think what a lot of Democrats are hoping is uh, even if he doesn't get the nomination, he, they want him to make it to the convention and have a seat at the table, um, be in a negotiation, much the same way that Hillary was when, when uh, Obama got the nomination. Mm -hmm. You know, she got a seat at the table. She got to be Secretary of State. Um, you know, Bernie, will, you know, will, when they ask him the question, you know, would you be Hillary's vice president? Well, what would you say? I mean, he, he answers it great. He said, would she be mine? <laughs> great answer. But when it comes down to it, if he doesn't get the nomination, that's the time to ask him. And I'm sure he'll do what he needs to do. But the best thing he could do if he doesn't get the nomination is push her to the left. And I think he will do that. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. What do you, what's InfoWars? InfoWars.com. Check it out. Okay. It's probably everything you're, um, I wouldn't say against, but we're free market libertarians. Okay. So we probably agree on like half the issues and... The other half the we don't. Social issues, and yeah. Not on the, uh, not on the other stuff. Not, not on the, uh, the capitalism issues. No, definitely I'm a, not. I'm a government teacher in high school, so uh. if I sound like I know a few things about this, it's so you're molding young minds. I am to be young democratic socialists. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I get it's amazing. I get probably in a class of 25, 27 kids. I'll get probably. Two or three libertarians, mm -hmm. and it it surprises me a bit because you know it's it's the third party kind of thing, um, and you know they well you know they don't really fit into either party, so it has to be a third party, um, and um, yeah, I mean I come across kids all the time that are of that ilk. And what what's your view of the public education system right now? Well, you know, we take a lot of bashing um, because in this state, because the governor mm -hmm. and the governor's policies and in many other states. Um, I, I can't speak for every school, but I hear there's a lot of cri criticism about civic education. Our kids don't know what's going on. We're going to force them to take this citizenship test because we don't think they can do it. I'll tell you what, all the kids that have come out of my class can take the citizenship test and pass it. Do you read the Constitution to your kids, or do they have them read Absolutely. It? And the Bill of Rights? We spend weeks on the Constitution. Absolutely. How are you with the Second Amendment? Uh, I am not a Second Amendment advocate. Um, I interpret the Second Amendment as um, I, I refuse to take the first part of the clause off. Well-regulated militia. Um, so All right. that's where I am. Thank you very much for being honest. You bet. Have a good one.